I'm Tabitha, and you know I hate it when things give me a hard time. Well, gluten was giving me a really hard time, so I had to tell it to fuck off. Wheat is the devil. I felt really, really sick and really crappy all the time. Incredibly lethargic, really bad stomach issues of just not wanting to eat because every time I ate, I felt sick. Can I taste some? Mm -mm. Listen, mm. whose show is this, yours or mine? It's your show, but I'm taking over. <laughs> Today on Be Well Week, we are saying goodbye to gluten. It's estimated that 99% of people don't even know that they are sensitive to gluten. So what is gluten? Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. <music> gluten is a group of proteins that is found in wheat, barley, rye, spelt, semolina, couscous, and bulgur. And of all those grains, wheat is the one we eat the most of. And wheat has the most gluten. So the problem with gluten, and wheat in particular, is it's insidious. It's everywhere. The wheat today is completely different to the wheat of our ancestors. The modern wheat is a transformed product of genetic research. It is a franken-grain. I want to introduce you to Tabitha. When you came to me, you know, I said you've got to get rid of gluten, and you did it. Yeah, you did. You were you were not that nice about <laughs> it. You were very, very firm. The first thing you said to me was give up gluten. And I was so desperate to feel good that I would have done anything that you told me. But it was remarkable because that was your diagnosis after a year and a half of me going to all these other doctors, and nothing worked. You've been such a good example of showing that it's not really that difficult. So you have remained gluten-free, mm -hmm. so how hard is it during the week? It's like anything, it's a new kind of lifestyle and you need to adapt. The hardest meal is breakfast. What's a typical breakfast for you? A shake that I make. Tabitha, you're on the run all the time, mm -hmm. you're busy, you've got no patience. <laughs> what do you do for breakfast? <laughs> what are you saying? I have no patience. Okay, so I make a shake. So what I do is I travel with a little blender and I just make a really easy shake. So I so use almond see. milk. Yeah. So almond milk is good fat, so that's really important. Of course, I use your sustain that is amazing. So sustain is a pea protein, which is a vegan vegetable protein made from peas. It's, it's actually just made from peas? It's made from peas wow. and it's a really good source of protein. I like blueberries so Love I use blueberries. blueberries. Love blueberries. And blueberries are a great source of antioxidants so blueberries are a perfect addition to a shake. And I honestly just kind of take a handful. I don't measure anything, I just whack it in and it and tastes good. You also taught me this no. which sounded so weird to me until I tried it and it's so yum. I put some avocado in right. my shake. So avocado is another great source of really good fats that makes the shake creamy and thick. Tell me why, even though, because everyone goes, avocado's fattening, avocado's fattening, right? Right. So I'm putting avocado in my shake every morning, because right. I make this every morning. Yeah. How come I'm not gaining weight and I'm eating several avocados a week, doctor? It's a myth that you get fat from fats, because you don't get fat from good fats you actually get fat from sugar. We've been brainwashed to think that all fats are bad for you. Okay. And that's nonsense. Is that so this why, is really good. Is that why my um, skin looks better as well? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely, it could oh, be, yeah. You ready? I'm ready. All right, I love this. It's going to be nice. So I just whiz it for a few seconds, just enough to actually blend the avocado. I like a little chunky with my fruit, so I like to actually get little fruit pieces in there. And then you can whack some ice in and you're good to go. Breakfast. Good. Can I have it? Can I taste some? Mm -mm. Listen, mm. whose show is this? Yours or mine? It's your show, but I'm taking over. <laughs> and I'm really hungry. <laughs> you don't want to piss me off when I'm hungry. I'm bad enough when okay. I'm not hungry. Okay. No, I'll taste wait. it, honestly. Could do with a little ice, but it's good. Mm, delicious. Yes. Absolutely it, honestly, delicious. Honestly, it's amazing. Delicious. This, to me, is an ideal meal. It's got good protein, good fats, phytonutrients, easy to digest because it's in a shake perfect meal. How much gluten I actually ate, as I said, I was living on toast and that was my go-to, or pasta. And now I realise that there were signs because I would have a bowl of pasta and I'd start to talk like Donald Duck. I'd get all congested, my nose would run, sometimes my eyes would itch. Now, I don't get any of those things. I don't snore anymore. 
I breathe much better. I don't, I don't have allergy problems like I used to have. I never have stomach issues anymore since I've given up gluten. It is really amazing. I'm very impressed. Mm. I'm impressive I have that effect on people. If you feel gluten is getting the better of you, here's some Be Well tips for the week. Try eliminate gluten for two weeks. You'll see how much better you feel. You'll feel vital, you'll feel healthy. Try it. Instead of gluten grains, try some rice, some amaranth, some buckwheat, some millet, and some quinoa. It's absolutely delicious. Instead of gluten bread, try some gluten-free bread. Easy to get, also quite delicious. Try this, you will see how much better you'll feel. And you know what? You'll probably lose some weight too. I'm Dr. Frank Lippman, helping you be well today and every day. And I came to see you and I just said, I want to feel better, basically. I remember what we did was we basically got rid of anything that could possibly be bothering me. Wouldn't you like to quit your job and live the life you've always dreamed of? You're really living the dream, I would imagine, the expat dream. I feel more free here than I do in the States. This is it, man. Yeah, this this is, the is the life. Join me, Savannah Jane Buffett, as I follow two buddies from college who quit their grueling office jobs and moved down to St. John to be bartenders in paradise. Now they're not just serving drinks, they've created the number one microbrew in the Caribbean. I looked out and it was about 30 cubicles. And at that moment, I said, I can't. I knew I wanted to roll the dice and that I wanted to take a break from what I was doing. Nice place to live, don't you think? Not bad. It was a very surreal feeling because this is all new to me. This is going to be my new home. At that point, we knew we were all in. They're the lucky guys, man. They make beer for a living on an island. It's just two guys hanging out in the Caribbean and, and brewing some great beer and, you know, living the dream, I guess. <laughs>